In this episode, we'll discuss wood selection. Since we're making a set of eight chairs in all, not one chair, the selection of wood is a little bit different. If you're making a single chair, um, typically you're going to want most of the wood all out of one or two boards, if at all possible. But when you're making a set of chairs, you want the chairs to look like they're all part of the set, not mix and match chairs uh, set up of different selections of wood. So what we have here is the uh, board we selected for our back legs, and also a second board that are fairly well mated in color and grain. The, what, the back leg has an arch to it. This is the template for it. And we tried to find boards that had, you can see the blue lines that kind of follow the grain pattern where we set out four legs on one side and this is the left leg where the top of the leg on the facing, front facing side has a curve back to it. On the other side of the board we have the matching sets four, three, two, and one straight across from each other on the board. Again the grain curves back with the pattern of the leg and it'll curve to the outside of the leg. So these are the right sides of the back legs. Another point on the selection of the wood, on the edge of this you can see there's a bunch of white wood here, the green outer edge. We tried to really avoid that in our pattern as it would completely change the staining and the coloration that you can get um, and look like a real flaw in the piece. So we've avoided those parts in the layout of our legs. This is the template for the front legs of the chairs and we're going to add those or cut those out of this remaining part of this board with uh, two of the legs for the backs being cut out of here where the grain follows it as well as possible. The grain is much straighter on this board so we felt it was much better for the front legs. Um, that will give us a uniform color of all of the legs of all of the chairs. For doing the layout of the side rail and center front rail for the chairs, we took uh, two pieces of lumber that are book matched, basically opened them up, and these will be the facing outward facing parts of each of the rails. Um, we laid it out so that the grain in line with the railing rather than uh, occasionally um, the might not be perfectly straight. The grain goes this way. And on this one it's a little bit more angled this way so we set it so that this, the grain would be pretty much straight on all of the boards so we'd have a uniform look from one chair to the next especially on the fronts. For the sides there'll be a complementing book matched side with the grain laid out the same way. In laying out the fronts we had to be a little bit more careful. There were some blemishes in the wood. Branches coming through here and here. We could have taken those as the centers but that would be a um, little bit of a weak point. It's a little bit rougher because the grain changes direction through here. A little bit harder to plane down. So rather than including a little dip in each front rail, we decided to go with, again, pretty much a straight grain across each one. And here the grain is more like that direction on the board. It's not in line with the edge. We considered the crest rail to be one of the most important design parts of the chair as it's the most visible. You see it above the table. You see it from the back. And um, it's important that you have a really cont continuous flow from one chair to the next. So we found one board, this is actually one full length of board, that um, we felt would work well for the crest rail and probably wouldn't work really well for other parts. In order to tell just how we were laying out our template, we created a piece of plastic so we could see where we were laying out the design 
that allows us to see the full grain in each piece as we lay it out rather than just trying to guess by laying our, our solid template out. So this is the second one. We're missing the two armchairs, so we're missing numbers one and five as you go around the table. So this is the first one on the side, number two, number three, the ah, fourth one is there. Continuing down the board, missing number five, which is an armchair. So the other side of the table, number six, number seven, with a slight arc to it this way. And number eight is not this way because of the arc that you see in the grain here. So we turned it around and number eight lies this direction. On uh, number eight, we had to be very careful. It's a different piece than all the others. Um, you can see how sharply this contrasts with the rest of everything. And on the back side of the chair, it comes through at an angle. So we had to try to, it's like this through the grain of the wood rather than straight through. So, um, so that it doesn't look too bad on the front or the back of the chair. We tried to uh, compensate for that in where we laid that out. We decided not to use this other part where there's two swoopy curves in the grain. Uh, this grain would be very difficult to work with. A lot of different changes of direction, um, possible tear out. So we pretty much avoided that. Okay, there is a trick to be able to see what kind of grain you're really dealing with. Uh, sometimes you'll have things that aren't, we planed it off first, so that helps some, but um, if you take alcohol, you can see how the grain really pops out. This is that number eight piece that has this art coming through it here, a little bit different. The number seven piece is, uh, this is upside down, so it's going this way with the top here and the bottom here, counting for this arc. This is the part that we avoided altogether. You can see it's kind of wild and chewed up on the back, didn't go through the planer nicely. And the last piece, and you can see the beautiful grain of the wood and how nice the mahogany looks. Here we have the boards laid out for our back splat. It was cut out of one continuous board and I'm able to get two back splats out of each thickness of uh, the board by cutting it with the bandsaw. The way we've laid this out and selected our wood is we looked for a board that had the straightest grain possible. We didn't want to have a lot of waviness or curviness as we lay out the templates on the boards. And initially when I laid this out, I found a point that I felt would be a good center line for the back splat to be laid out on each of these. And uh, before I went to cut anything apart, I wanted to make sure I had a continuous line and that everything would match up identically. So I've marked that line from one end to the other before cutting and also transferred that to the bottom of the board uh, so that all of my back splats will have the bottom clearly indicated on them and I know which direction the grain is to run on each of them. So the end goal is to have a very consistent look to our backsplat grain from one end to the other for each of the chairs. Again, keeping in mind that whole part of a set concept rather than having one backsplat, nice straight grain, and another one has grain that curves off in a direction. 